Hi, everybody. Happy Mother's Day. I hope that you guys are all doing great today. Wasn't it so cool having Ian Ziering with us yesterday? He's so iconic. I love being friends with him. It just feels like, like I've arrived. Anyway, I hope you guys are all doing well. It's Mother's Day, so wherever you are in the world, I hope you have a great Mother's Day. Yes, I see all the hearts. It's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you to those of you guys that wished me a happy Mother's Day. Thank you. I am iconic. That's right. I think I've been, think I've been thinking about naming this little beauty business hashtag Team Law and Order. I don't know. I have to think about it. Um, so wherever greetings from New York, I know I wore this because it's Mother's Day and I am in a New York state of mind because I grew up in New York and my friend Seppi, who's coming on today, uh, is in New York, as you guys know, if you've been here with me and her before. Um, but yeah, I was thinking so much about my mom, as you guys know, because my mom passed away nine years ago. Um... And I just was thinking of her. I miss New York. I see you in New Jersey, E-R-O-L-415. Um, there's Seppi. Okay. I'm adding Seppi. I'm glad you guys have been liking these lives. That makes me so happy. Hi. I wore this shirt for you. <laughs> That's so great. That's so great. How are you? Happy New York Day. Happy New York Day. Happy Mother's Day. I know. Well, you know I grew up in New York, so That's I think it's only fitting that I would speak to my new and beautiful friend who's in New York on Mother's Day. <laughs> How are you? I'm I'm good. I'm um you know, it really hit me today being my family's in California and, you know, not being able to go home for the holidays and um, being apart on especially this day. It's tough. So I've been a little sad today, but profoundly grateful. I mean, I'm, I'm so grateful to have my apartment. I'm so grateful to have, you know, my dog. <laughs> and um, otherwise, you know, it's weird. It's a weird time. No, I know. And I really appreciate you for saying that um, because, you know, there have been days I've not wanted to do this, but I've yeah. done it every day. And even Easton yeah. and I talked about it, my daughter and I saying, you know, how important it is to be consistent. My oldest friend uh, from childhood is here. He said, hello, Bedford. Hi, Rob. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm homesick for New York, too, all the time. And the idea of being separated from family you know, is really painful. But beyond that, I think that our emotions right now are just, it's really touch and go, you know, yeah. and to be gentle with yourself enough to just say, I'm really sad. There really is no end in sight yet. So I think it's fair to say that even if we're, you know, emotional ninjas when it comes to uncertainty, because we're artists and we've talked a lot about that together. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's, um, it's, a, it's a lot. I was just thinking about it in, in my backyard because I was gardening and I was like, I was like, you know, you know, there's an impermanence to everything you have, right? To yeah. your home, to when you don't know how things will turn out. I mean, that's just real talk to say, we don't know how long is this going to last a year, um, a two year. I mean, we just don't know what the fallout will be. We don't know who's going to be the next president. We, there's so much we don't know. So I think it's just, yeah. we're going to have days when we're sad. Totally. And I've always taken comfort because you know how it is with what we do. You never really know when you have to be where. And right. um, there's a real flexibility and a looseness with the term home, not just because of what I do, but because of my background and everything too. And, and so I feel like I've gotten really comfortable with being away, getting used to missing people, but knowing that I'll see them soon. And what's so strange about this time is that I haven't had this experience of missing my loved ones since I can remember, because there's always been in the back of my mind, this opportunity to just hop on a plane and visit. 
And right. now we just don't know what that entails and having to, I have other friends who, who want to visit their friends or their families or their partners. And, you know, because of this two week quarantine period, especially coming from New York, you have to be extra careful. What do you mean two week? You mean two well, months? Well, no, because <laughs> when you travel out of New York, you have to go oh, right, right, two right. weeks um, before you, you make contact with anyone. So yeah. yeah, it's it's really strange. And so a friend of mine, I was talking to him last night, and he said that he wants to go visit his partner, and um, in Santa Fe, I think. And um, and the trouble there is that if he goes, he has to spend two weeks there, and isolated from him. That's right. That's right. And so right. it's just it complicates everything, but. All we can do is, I thank God we have FaceTime, you know, what would we do without this? What did they do during the Spanish flu, you know? It's just like mind boggling. Yeah, no, I was thinking, you know, on one hand, what's happening is awful. Yeah. On the other hand, I was saying to a friend yesterday, it almost feels like my childhood in Bedford, you know, where, you know, the days eternal eternal summers every day felt like an eternal summer if you want to sleep yeah. in a little bit you can if you want to get up you can if you want to go on a walk you can you know it yeah. just feels like summertime in this weird way especially here in LA where it's so beautiful yeah. and and I think I'm gonna miss you know just having this endless amount of time with my daughter on Mother's Day um you know I just will say I've loved these two months with Easton I've never yeah. had this except if it was summer yeah. But at the same time, you know, I really haven't seen my best friend, Tasha. I haven't seen certain people, you know, I really miss good friends of mine. I miss being social, you know, and, and I think also at times like this, there's a little bit of PTSD with other times in our life. You know, I mean, you, you sort of referred to your childhood and you can discuss it or not because I know about it personally. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think there's a little PTSD when we've been through tremendous scarcity or loss. Mm -hmm. This isn't just what's happening now. It's also what's happened to us in the past. And so, totally. you know, there have been days it's when I've just sad. woken up. Yeah, really, really sad. I mean, last Friday, I just burst into tears um, in the afternoon, just because I, I think like just whatever was kind of coming out of me during this time of stillness, it wasn't just today. It wasn't just yeah. the unknowing of now. It was just sort of the what today is triggering about back back when, you know? Totally. And that's incredibly, I was having that same thought today um, as I was feeling very emotional. And, and I, again, you know how this is. It's like your, your schedule is usually stacked. It's so full that you often don't have time to process your emotions. You don't have time to process... Right whatever trauma you even went through two years ago. And so this time that, you know, one thing happens, it seems unrelated to whatever has happened in the past, but they're, you know, the, the, the same neurons start firing up and, and we get triggered and we have this incredibly emotional or maybe surprising, maybe cathartic experience out of seemingly nowhere. But um, yeah, I've been, I've been thinking about that a lot about how this, experience of being alone and being left alone with our emotions being left alone with the stories that we keep in our heads the stories that we've actually experienced right it's it's so healing because it's like a purge and without i mean I, i'm talking about us and many people here who are lucky enough to have access to instagram who are lucky enough to have homes um we are able to take advantage of this opportunity and cleanse and allow these things to run through us because we don't have to run to our next obligation. But I mean, I, I know a lot of people, as I'm sure you do, who don't have that luxury. And so um, you, have, you, I have, have, you have no idea, or maybe you do if you have another really good friend in Venice, but the homeless population yeah. here, it's just unbelievable. I mean, I, I, it's gotten worse and worse and worse. And right now, under these circumstances, Rose Avenue, going to Penmar, if any of that's familiar to you, is literally, yeah. it's, in, it's encampments. They're all up against the, t the golf course because the golf course is closed. And where are these people going to go? I mean, people have truly moved out onto the streets. It's, 
It's yeah, devastating. It's, it is devastating and totally unrelated. This is just an interesting fact that came up when I was listening to the radio today. They were saying that New York rats have now created groups and they're fighting each other because there isn't enough garbage on the street for them to eat. So even the rats are going, oh my God, crazy. that's just like Isn't the that worst. crazy and disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. And yeah. so, yeah. Even our rats are struggling. So Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, you know, it's sort of like to, you know, complete. So both the thoughts, one is I do think that, you know, I, it's like, you know, what would they say? Like in, in any spiritual belief, um, right. There's an element of the, of wisdom being, um, that everything is, is to, to learn and truly process that everything is temporary, right? Yeah. Pain, yeah. joy. We, we can't be attached to anything because it's all temporary. Even yeah. Life is temporary. You know, so it doesn't matter what spiritual practice you have. That's always a part of the DNA of, I think, anything spiritual. Yeah. You know, and so I do think that as we, you know, process the impermanence and, you know, and the uncertainty of all this, I do think we're going to come out really... For those of us that, you know, are not destroyed financially, um, and I think a lot of us will be just whether it's, you know, partial or, you know, but I think this is yeah, obviously going to be very hard for all of us financially. But I do think on the positive side of things, I do think we're going to come out with a lot of uh, inner strength from this time and wisdom about, you know, what, what we're capable of surviving. If we've been through any trauma at all in our lives, we know that it was temporary and that, you know, a big part of our character was defined upon um, yeah. surviving that and building from that, that becoming a part of your foundation. So yeah. when, one thing that I've been finding really interesting is that I have, since I started my professional scope, at least my professional perspective, which I would say when I started music, um, when I found music, that's when I, I became very serious about what I wanted to do with my life and, and going to college and, and starting in opera and everything. And ever since then, I, um, and I think this is common for a lot of people who work, who work hard, the New right. York community for sure. It's just like a lot of hustlers is that you don't take rest as something, you don't think of rest as something productive or useful. Um, you think that if you're sleeping, you're wasting time, you're not getting enough. And I've definitely, you know, thought like that for a long time, and then recently tried to convince myself to take more time to rest, and yet still subconsciously, it's so hard to justify. So what I'm noticing that I've been going through is in the beginning, trying to be incredibly productive and doing all the workouts and taking care of my dog and, and writing and, and, you know, creating projects. Um, I'm still working with the IRC on a couple projects on a, with a friend on a couple projects. So, so keeping myself active. And then I, I got to a point where I was like, I just need to not, you know, I just need to whatever this numbness is or whatever this sadness is or whatever this like laziness quote unquote is, I just need to give in to that. So what's nice, at least so far, since it's already been two months is that we can go through these stages and right. in the Atlantic, they wrote this article about how this is akin to, the stages of grief in a way, you know, being so, so out of control with, with no end in sight and no sense of, we, we don't know what normal will look like anymore. It's definitely right. not going to be the normal that we're used to. So it's been really nice to exercise this sense of surrender and just giving in to rest. And what would have been lazy before is actually very productive you know, yeah. very, yeah. there was a funny little meme that said, um, <laughs> it was somebody on their couch just lying down and said, um, lazy in 2019, um, saving lives in 2020 or something like that. <laughs> and it's true. I think that not only saving lives in terms of social distancing, but, but saving yourself, recharging, because when we create that space, we're able to think more clearly. So going back to your point, hopefully when we're out of this, we will have shed a lot of the shit that we don't need and a lot of the excess noise so that going back into our normal, our day to day, we can at least be a little bit more in touch with our intuition or in touch with our wants and needs in life, like what life really means. And like you said, I mean, if you're constantly on a treadmill in life, 
you never really have the time to get closure on things, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean like uh, if you your heart gets broken or you go through a difficult time or a death or divorce or whatever, that you're cold if you get through it quickly. It yeah, means that no. you're, you're, you're like moving forward. You've got, you know, you've got things to do. You want to be productive. You want to be proactive. You're like, going to take the high road. The glass is half full. You know, you yeah. may have this way of looking at light, life without kind of positive forward movement. But yeah. it does mean on some level, you've probably not had enough time to process, totally. you know, the trauma you've been through. If you don't make time and space to just sit in it, you don't ever really complete it. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, I had had a friend come on in the beginning of the quarantine who was a therapist. And she said, you know, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling scared, if you're feeling sad, just recognize that maybe some of it's about this, but some of it's just in your muscle memory, things you've been through that you have oh, yet to sort of complete process and let kind of pass through you, so to speak. Yeah. You know, yeah. like we as actors, we sit in stillness. We don't, we don't, we're not thinking when we perform, we're just mm -hmm. completely surrendering to use your words and, and to, and we free fall to use a word David O. Russell says. He's like, yeah. he likes the actors who free fall into the experience. We yeah. prepare before we work. And when we work, we free fall. Okay. And, and so, you know, I, I think we, we have sort of like in our muscle memory, the ability to say, like you said, to, to sit in the stillness and sort of let it, let it work its magic. Yeah. But we've never had this extended period of time. And I also really love what you've said um, about it being like the stages of grief. I do think that that's really true. That's what this feels like because every day is so different. And somebody here said so many childhood memories are coming up good and bad. And I would, it's true. I mean, you know, it's like our, our minds are becoming so expansive that all the files are beginning to like an accordion, like open up and like oh, things are popping up and it's, it's exciting. You know, you're really, I'm thinking about more memories and sense memories and feelings from the past that I'm like, I'm like, wow, is that what I really thought about it then? Is that what I really think about this now? Is that how I feel about them now? Is that yeah. what I really think of them? Because the accordion's like opening up and you're really having a greater sense of what you truly feel and think. And, nice. and it is, it's a great opportunity. I think not only are we cleaning out our closets and our, our key drawer in the kitchen and the garden or whatever, yeah. But we're cleaning out our minds and our spirits oh, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I love that that you brought up sense memory. I was recently thinking about that again too because that's something that I, um, I mean, it, it's not like I'm a Strasbourg girl at all, or I'm like a method person necessarily. Um, but the only time I, I really focus on sense memory and senses, like really you know, hone into my senses is right. sure in life as it happens, but at work, you know, where I have to like be totally sensual in the experience while we're at work. Right. 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 Um, but in life, even as I was looking at some old pictures and I was really spending time with each of them, you know, old pictures from my childhood with, with my family. And, and I was trying to remember the senses of the experience mm. of the picture, whether I remembered the moment or not. And it was so interesting because I personally never do that. I never, when I look at a picture, it goes up mm -hmm. here and I go, oh, I remember that, that was so fun. Next picture. Oh, that was a great moment. Next picture. My heart responds to another picture. I mean, it's just, it's so checklist almost. But right. to sit with something and actually have, actually have a sensual experience with a memory is so um it's such a privilege it's such a privilege to be able to dive into good memories and and i think the tricky thing is with bad memories is we don't want to like spend too much time right. digging up all of that stuff i think taking note of it right and in terms of like why we're being triggered and what memories come up but um yeah it's just it's so nice to be able to listen to yourself and explore what is helpful, what isn't helpful, how you feel, how, how you don't feel. It's, it's just having this time is, is a luxury. Yeah, and I also think um, it kind of, it gives you time to really take stock of what's happening now too. Yeah. Meaning, 
perhaps friendship relationships really processing yeah. you know the now of our relationships and who we really are today yeah. um you know and i you know like our friendship for instance grew yeah. grew out of the quarantine yeah to be able to really connect with you you know and to really have uh, a sense of com you know we're very compatible in the way we yes. think about things and and some some really great things have come out of the quarantine for for me personally mm -hmm. i started to write a screenplay or i should say i'm almost mm -hmm. done with it mm -hmm. i've never written a screenplay i was terrified of doing final draft i don't know why but so that's Good happened to you. the amazing. books that i started you know i've been doing this with people and yes. um there's just been a lot of great things that have come out of it as well yes. today you know is not a great day tomorrow yeah. will be a great day the next day might be a weird day the next day will be almost like a normal day you know it just is going to ebb and flow as we go through it yeah yeah definitely I, I saw here at one point somebody had said that they don't have um, many pictures of themselves growing up. And I think, I think what's so incredible about, and this is something that our work has brought up mm -hmm. for me, is that especially in certain ways I can be very type A, you know, and like I have to do this right. I have to do this assignment right. Um, but what's so beautiful about using the creative part of ourselves is that we can, we can like go in and the unconscious actually reveals a lot more about our memories than we know, you know, Absolutely. Than and so, um, whether it's, you know, that sounds appealing or not, the picture is actually just the trigger, right? For the memory. But we are filled with, I remember reading this article years ago that said, um, memories are like directions. So whenever you think that you don't remember something, it's actually because you've forgotten the direction. And so if you do things or the more you meditate, the more you get in touch with things that, that trigger the direction, the memory then fires up. And so um, that might be, or not, a nice exercise for you know, people to, to, to explore if there are memories that they wanna get in touch with or memories that, um, of people it or was, it was john anthony dunn he wants yeah that mentioned that about the pictures hi john yeah that's a great point that's a great point because we don't even need pictures sometimes in order to fire up our memories and sometimes somebody else had said i think it was um uh i i can't remember brie chick she had mentioned that um, there are some memories that she doesn't want to explore, and I think that's valid. There are plenty of memories that I don't want to explore either, or I don't want to go back to either. But I think picking mm -hmm. and choosing, you know, what you do want to focus on and what you want to focus on in the present and for the future, it's like you get to do whatever Right, you and, want. And, and, and sometimes just taking the time to acknowledge that maybe something's a little bit undone for you yeah. and sort of finishing it in, in this time it's sort of yeah. it's like projects right i've written a 300 page book it's only going to take one more pass to go incredible what that like i just have to go through one pass to sort of finish it it's not going to require that much work it just was no. like i don't know I, my spirit lost interest or whatever or whatever i'm just saying even if it's a bad memory from childhood or a bad experience in your life or a bad relationship we don't have to go and like sit and like pick our scabs over no, 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 you know no, it's like no. but we can go back and address it for a small moment in all this time we're being given now and sure. just sort of give it its proper departure be like thank you goodbye you know it's like do some sort of ceremonial thing in your head where you just go sure. thank you and goodbye because totally. i realize you're still bothering me you know totally, what I mean? totally. I mean, there are different forms of therapy too that that I, I'm I'm sure you've heard of. I know my sister and her husband are both Chinese medicine practitioners, and in Chinese medicine, you don't, um, you know, in Eastern medicine, they don't necessarily believe and practice talk therapy that you talk about the memories because then it just stimulates the memory or bad memories, I should say because then it just stimulates you. And, and as we know, you know, our experiences, our painful experiences, the thing that causes us suffering most is just the repetition mm -hmm. of the, the dialogue, 
you know? Mm -hmm. And so what they talk about is, and I'm sorry if I'm butchering this to anybody who's fluent in Chinese medicine, is that you have these meridians in your bodies. And once you clear the meridian associated to that pain, you're able to let go. So maybe that's an interesting practice for this time is, is getting in touch with where the memory lives in your body and, and just the, like not even going down to the story, but acknowledging that and just letting it go. Um, no, no, she won't do it. <laughs> and so, yeah, there, there's a, um, there are a lot of different approaches approaches to this but i'm i'm yeah. specifically um grateful for the good memories that we're able to get in touch with and, and have time to make room for in this time so what are you going to do when this all is over a few people have been sending messages saying seppi what are you going to do what are you going to do when this is over um well in terms of work you know we're going to start shooting the second season of l word as soon as we can um and there have uh, you been given a date yet no date, no date yet. yet um i know a couple of my friends on different shows depending on where they're shooting in the world um anywhere from june or july if it's not in the states and then in the states what i've heard is as early as august or september right so yeah so who knows and and you know there's a lot of intimacy on our show so so i i'm just curious to know <laughs> what's going to happen with that there's going to be a lot of hand holding with masks going on a lot of like cgi <laughs> no, like masks and, and and holding hands and swinging them as you guys walk down the street yeah yeah so so there's that in terms of personal um projects i was working on a documentary with a friend of mine that required us to go travel um, so I'm not sure when we're going to be able to pick up on that. But I myself am writing. I'm not sure the format yet, um, but a project, a few stories that that I have to tell. And I'm just not sure if it's going to be in, um, you know, film format or uh, short story or, or what. So so when that is clear to me, uh, um, I'm focusing on that. And actually, if anybody is interested, I'm moderating this um, town hall on Tuesday with the IRC um, and they're talking about um, the refugees and immigrant communities that they've resettled and how they're responding. So obviously that's a community that has been hit hardest um, and yeah. IRC, thank God we have organizations like IRC um, doing everything to, to help. Can you explain to me, um, you know, you know, because the only refugees organization I've ever been aware of it, um, is Refugees International, but that's yeah. not what you're referring to, is it? No, there are many, um, but the International Rescue Committee was um, actually, it was founded by Albert Einstein, who himself was a refugee. And um, it is uh, the biggest refugee resettling agency in the world. Uh -huh. They work in 25 different countries and within the states, 40 different states here. Um, I mean, they work all over, but they, they have offices in 40 different states. And, um, and they work tirelessly and they respond to the, the different needs of different countries. So in the Northern Triangle of South America, obviously the needs are different than in Yemen or in Syria. So depending on the needs, um, they mm. have teams who, who respond. And, and right now, obviously, with COVID-19, there are countries that don't even, we're not even able to, to count how no. many people are infected because, and, and with refugee camps in general, it's like you can't social distance. Have you and done so, a lot of travel and gone to refugee camps? I haven't. When I was, um, when I was in uh, Romania for a singing tour, I spent some time in orphanages, actually. And that was the first time I was like 16 years old or something when I, when I went. And um, that so was a lot of people before you finish that thought, a lot of people are saying, how can I access the Zoom? How? So before oh, like yeah. you tell them, but then yeah, finish. for sure. Sorry, I lose track of all these things. So um, I will go back up and, and I'll make sure to post about it. So, yeah. so you all can listen. But that was the first time that that I. Um, you know, separate from my family's experience, I had firsthand experienced being in another country 
Mm -hmm. um, and because we didn't really have the means to travel globally or even interstate. We'd get, we'd pack our car and drive to Oregon to visit our family friends, you know, that was, or go camping in Yosemite. I grew up in California, Northern California. Mm -hmm. And so that was our vacation. And, and when I uh, did this singing group, we had like a fundraiser and we raised our own uh, money to go travel. And, and the first year we went to Romania and Hungary. And we stayed in um, orphanages for a few weeks in Romania. And that was the first time that, mm -hmm. that I was aware of, obviously I was aware of my family situation, everything, but that was a very different type of global crisis. And, um, and that was my first sort of encounter as a young, you know, as a teenager of activism and wanting to be involved and wanting to give back. Um, but in terms of, um, refugee camps and visiting i have not yet um there was a plan i was working with a, a dear friend of mine do you know todd crim yes yes so That's todd so and funny. i were um you know he came and was involved in my fundraiser he he came uh -huh. to my fundraiser and supported that and and um he has this he was going to have this big um celebration in jordan um in september for refugees and so um, I was working as an ambassador for, for his event. And my plan was to go to Jordan around that and hopefully go to Iraq with my producing partner for the documentary that, that we're working on. But obviously with COVID-19. So, so I've got to interrupt. I, I need to oh, yeah. introduce you to a few people. And I want to propose, I want to propose a few things when we have freedom. Yeah. So I have worked with the American Red Cross for almost 20 years. I've done a lot of international um, disaster relief work. I'd like to take you on a disaster trip with me. Yes. I'd like you to take me on a refugee yeah. trip. So we both get to do something we yeah. love or want to do more of. And yeah. then I can show you mine and you can show me yours. Definitely. Um, I Definitely. want to get on a text with you and Todd. So we can sort of do some more philanthropic work together yeah. because I think that that's very much at the heart of our connection. Yeah. And the other thing is, is I'd like to introduce you to a guy named Jeremy Courtney. Have mm -hmm. you ever heard of the Love Coalition? I have, but okay. please jog my memory. I can't. So, so after 9-11, um, Jeremy and his wife left New York City. They moved to Iraq to create, um, to do crisis work there. Um, and what, you know, to help there, but also to sort of help our consciousness because we, we hated, you know, this, the, the Muslims and this world so much that at that time, there was so much fear and hatred that he and his wife felt like, let's go face all of that with love. Let's mm -hmm. go face all that hate and fear with love and show the human beings there as well. Yeah. Yeah. And he and his wife with their child went, I'm sure I'm butchering his story. So Jeremy, if you're listening, I'm sorry. Um, but I've had him come on one of my um, Rome Reveals panels and he has shared his journey of love by going into the Middle East at a time where there were so much fear and hatred um, and how it really changed him and his, he, he and his wife. And um, so their work in the Middle East is still active. It's gotten bigger. Please see a movie called, um, uh, love, not love, actually. When you look up the Love Coalition, love anyway. Oh, oh my okay. God. You know that Mother Teresa poem, Love Anyway? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so the, the documentary is called Love Anyway. Okay, Please, great. When you see this documentary, girl, you are going to burst into tears. It is so <laughs> full. It is so take much to make me <laughs> burst into tears. Maybe don't today, watch but... it today, okay? <laughs> <laughs> doesn't take much just like blow in my direction but yeah <laughs> but definitely please, but check that out i will and yes so i'm gonna we, connect we you with your, yeah why don't you watch that if you're like yeah liz i'd love to connect with them but you'll let me I know yeah, um of course but those are some cool things for us to look forward to in the future absolutely absolutely yeah it's important to i'm glad that that you're talking about this and um you know, we're discussing this right now because I think it's important to, to have things for us to look forward to as well. And not yeah. be attached to how soon it happens. This is a goal that will happen. Maybe it'll happen in six months and maybe it'll happen in five years. You know, we don't know what it will be, but right. having that, you know, clear, like putting it out there, 
deciding that this is something that we're going to do together. I mean, that's how my life has unfolded. I'm sure it's the same for you is that I've been sure that I've wanted something. And then over a period of time, sometimes it's months, sometimes it's days, often it's years, you plant the seeds and then they sprout. So I think it's, it can feel really um, unmotivating and that's and right. Kind of like sad being in this situation, you can feel stuck, but maybe just writing down a couple things that, that you would dream of doing in the, you know, in the near future and in, in the distant future and holding on to that. I know this is such a silly comparison, but I know that like when Beyonce was preparing for her homecoming uh, performance at Coachella, mm -hmm. she would put the dress and pictures to keep her on track. You right. Know? So anytime she'd be tempted, anytime she'd be, um, you know, feeling weak, she'd have those visual reminders pulling right. her forward into her goals. And so that might be a helpful thing. I mean, that's something that I'm, I've started to do too, because it's so easy to just go like, and that's good too, to, to just stop and not do anything for a period, but, but also articulating and, and putting out. Yeah. Some well, good. especially as you get clearer about what you want in yes. your life, there's a, yes. there's an old book called think and grow rich. Yeah. Maybe well, it's not for everybody or whatever. It's very, 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 it's very like old. from the 60s, right? 50s or something, right? Because it, no, even longer. From the 20s. Exactly. Um, but, but let's sort of step away from the book yeah. and, ta and just sort of take away, extrapolate from it the thing that works, I think, for people from it, which is write down what you, what you want, like your life's purpose, what you need, what you would want more than anything. Yeah. Sign it, date it. Read it before you go to bed every night. Read it every time yeah. you, before you wait, get out of your bed. There's many more steps, just like the artist's way has steps, that book has steps. But yes, I like this way of, you know. You know, being very purposeful about what you, um, what you, you know, want to manifest for your life and staying on purpose. And yes, more philanthropy, more journeys, more traveling, yes. more helping others. Um, and, uh, it's a really big part of my life. Yes, yes, that's so important and beautiful. And I'm so glad you're using your platform to, to share this part of you to, and inspire other people because it doesn't take, really it doesn't even take a platform to engage in this way. You know, if there's anything that you're passionate about, whether it's, you know, immigrant rights or climate change or, or whatever, um, research, typing in Google and then getting in touch, sending it. That's how I got involved with the IRC was I, I was giving them money for a long time. And then mm -hmm. years ago, I asked if I could volunteer. And mm -hmm. then the volunteering became, you know, years later, us actually collaborating. And now I'm one of their, their voices, one of their ambassadors. Yeah. And so, so I think that, you know, from a, from a community level to a state level, global level, it doesn't matter. There are so many ways that you can help without, without being uh, present and so many ways that you can help without necessarily giving money if you don't have money to give. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's so I really appreciate you being so generous with, with your work and your heart and also sharing it with everyone, because I think it's important for us all to, to know how easy it is to get involved. Well, and I really appreciate you not canceling on me, even though you <laughs> felt a little bit down today. And I just think, I think the world of you, like the one thing I've learned mm -hmm. about you in such a short amount of time is you really, you're really very honest and transparent. Like you, mm -hmm. you, you speak what you thinking and feeling. And it's just, I just really appreciate you being so honest with me. I know everybody here has been, you know, really moved. I, and there's been a sort of stillness to our conversation today, which, um, you know, as we go through all of this, I just think is going to be, I hope, you know, something I said to myself yesterday, I said, I started to notice, I was like doing all these things again. And I was like really, really busy. And I was like, yeah, I was like, slow down. Yeah. You, you have nowhere to go. Slow down. Yeah. And, and, and take a snapshot of the sense memory of what that is 
And when you step through that door, when this is over, yeah, you, I hope you have a deep imprint of what that felt like. So you can try to remember to do that every single day when this is over. Cause I do think that that, that has been a really big gift, you know, two yeah. months yeah. of sitting like this, it becomes a memory and I hope we do take, take it with us. And there are ways to, to create tools in order to practice this too. I have a friend that every 10 minutes, she has a timer, that, like a ding that goes off on her phone that reminds her to slow down, you know? So whether you have a phone and you can create a timer or you can create like different times during the day to like write down, you know, a piece of gratitude or, or whatever it is. And if this sounds too woo woo for you, it, it's really, I mean, it's been scientifically proven that that this is how what our brains respond to. It's not it's not just like a woo woo spiritual thing. This is science too. Right. So um so it's it's helpful at least for me to anchor myself in with the tools that I have. So I do set a timer or I, I do like when I'm more organized in my life, I have like a schedule where I'm like, this is the time that I'm gonna work out. This is the time that I'm gonna meditate. And I think these things as we create a schedule in this quarantine um, are, are really helpful to get in touch with, but also not to pressure yourself to get to that place, to be like, let it go as it is and, and be easy on yourself. Like you said before. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I know you wish you were with your mama today and I'm sure she misses you too. And you as well. And you as well. I know. I finally got Easton to take a walk with me. <laughs> I was like, what do you want for Mother's Day? I want to go on a long, long walk with you. Because you know I ride my bike, and that's how I get my exercise. Yeah. But just to take a long walk with a preteen, you know, is almost, like, difficult. That's so, like um, getting a long walk with, like, Brad Pitt or something. That's, like, it's just yeah. a walk. You know? That's, that's... I saw um, on my way, I was taking Simone, my dog, on a walk this morning. And it was such a trip. It was just one of those moments that, you remember you're in quarantine where obviously you see people with masks on the street, but there is a line at this bodega down the street, everyone holding flowers with masks on their phones. It was just like, and six feet apart. I was like, this is, this is one for the books. I'll send you a picture. <laughs> I mean, really? Yeah. yeah Didn't we say fun. you were in New York during 9-11, right? No, 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 no. No, you weren't. Yeah, no. Somebody no. and I were talking about it on one of these lives. You know, like, I mean, God, you just never could believe living in New York at that time. Yeah. And I'll never forget what that felt like to, to be downtown and to see, you know, dust all over the steps of the courthouses. It was like snow from, you know, anyway. But there's Where certain, were you there, living at that time? Where in New York? Um, at that time, I was living in Midtown. Okay. But, um, but yeah, I mean, there are just certain visuals that, you know, will stay with you forever, right? Totally. There are visuals that will stay with us forever. We will never forget this. And our children will never forget this, you know? And, yeah. um, you know, I've done a lot of talking with Easton. Ironically, you and I have talked a lot about philanthropy and just sort of being very positive and visionary. And, you know, homeschooling has been really hard for these kids. And I've been, you know, very compassionate um, with Easton. But um, I've said, you know, you can never forget this. You know, you can never forget that right now you have to work harder than ever on your education because the world is going to need you guys. The world needs you now, you know, and it's our job as your parents to get you ready, to give you the tools to go out there and make an impact because <laughs> we've never needed you more. <laughs> you know, I think that the, 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 this younger generation that are very young during this time, but old enough to remember it, you know, I hope that it built, I hope it, I hope that they are uh, a generation of activists. Yes. And quick <laughs> talk about transparency. This is something that I was thinking about earlier was I don't have any kids right now. And I've kind of been back and forth about, I know that eventually I want to adopt, but having my own and anyway, I, um, but you have friends with kids and oh, you, definitely. you know, oh, definitely. So I, I mean, mentor like... all the time, but like what my thought was, was the thing that makes me want to have a child more than anything else is that is the children are <laughs> sounds so cliche, but the way that we shape our future. Right. Yeah, and so what sure. you're doing with your child is exactly how we can 
in short, preserve, save, allow our planet to thrive, you yeah. know, is the practices and the lessons that we teach them now. And so that is so appealing to me about having a kid, you know, is like having that sort of um, uh, ability to share and and help and mentor. I mean, I, I mentor a, a lot of people, specifically like refugee immigrant children. Right. But um, but yeah, having that that ability to to give all of like take allow them to take the shortcut, whatever what took you years and years to learn, just give it to them immediately, and then how well we can and and, and, and right now for parents who are living in an environment with their children, they've never been more exposed and totally. you know, and I and I and I would really suggest to parents. Um, you know, as they are exposed, their truest natures and their habits and so forth to their children to acknowledge who they are, honestly. Totally. Because I do think, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, a habit of parents where they like pretend they're this person, but they're really this person. Yes. And they, they are, you know, authoritative from that sort of um, hypocrisy. Oh. And, um, now we're really exposed in a way like to our partners, but to our children, let's say, is the stuff subject to standpoint. And I do think that as we become more exposed to them as who we are as human beings in this environment where, um, you know, we can't portray our image to them, but we are truly ourselves, that we should create a narrative with that. We should talk about that. We should put words to it and explanations and deep yeah. narrative to that because I, you know, I said to Easton today, and I do really parent her from this point of view, I respect her as a soul that I don't have possession of, that I only have yeah. in my presence for a short amount of time. And I hope that when she's older, that I've shown her enough respect in her childhood that I'm invited to her table as an adult. And she said, Mama, <laughs> and she said, Mama, I'm going to cry because it's Mother's Day. Oh. And she said, y you're invited. You're going to be invited. And I said to her, I wanted to read her the chapter in the prophet on children, because my mother read it to me. And my mother raised me with that treatment, you know, that I was um, a soul in her care, mm -hmm. but that I was my own being, my own entity. Mm -hmm. So we need to protect them and we need to we need to educate them so that they have the tools to go out there and change the world. But we don't have ownership over them. Yeah, that's so incredible and radical that your mom taught you that, you know, that your mom was because it's so my mother was a total hippie and she taught meditation with Maharishi and she. <laughs> yeah, I remember she was <laughs> she was out there, but like. But and that's intellectual, incredible. yeah. Like being a parent and not feeling, because of course, with anything you love, you want to protect it. And you think protecting it is like being overbearing and controlling it, right? But being able to allow this independent soul to thrive and blossom and bloom and having like a friendship with an extension of yourself. A beautiful image my mom always says, she says, it doesn't matter how old you are the umbilical cord is still there, you know, and that's true that love and that connection between a mother, a mother and its child is is unlike anything else, right. But yeah. having the, the wisdom to realize that that it's not a possessive love, right? It's, right? it's like, this is actually my my job to come into this earth and give birth and then witness that birth and do everything I can to allow it to thrive and grow and yeah. Right. And I, and I, and I, and when the only things that I take offense to with Easton are things I would take offense to in any relationship. Like yeah. if you disrespect yourself in my presence, I have a problem with that. If you disrespect me to my face, I have a problem with that. Yeah. If you have gifts that were given to you by God and you throw them away, like by not doing your work or not doing 150%, like, you know, like I love people who are talented and do something with it. Like those yes. are my friends. And yes. I, when that's what I, if I have an issue with Easter, that's what I say. Like I, you are brilliant. Use it. Don't yes. throw it away as garbage, you know? So yes. it's, I, I, but I do say that to her. I say, you know what? 
the way I speak to you or what offends me if you know there's something going on between us is something that, that would offend me with an adult. It's just the way I'm wired, you know? Yeah, yeah. Treating your 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 kid like an adult, respecting yes. them like an adult. And so often, oh my gosh, so often kids just school us. You know? It's oh like yeah. The the simplicity and the directness and the purity of their perspective. Yeah, it's so refreshing because ours is so polluted with so much nonsense that society just puts onto us like these mm -hmm. standards that are so silly and temporary. They change throughout time. When you look at history as like what was popular in the 20s and the 50s and the 40s and now it's just all over the place and it's usually pretty unintentional. So seeing somebody and experiencing another young soul who just mm -hmm. has none of that bias and just gives it as it is, is direct and true. It's, it's, it's like, yeah, it's kind of mind blowing, you know? Well, thanks. I don't know what made me go off on that, but, um, but I guess since it's Mother's Day and if you guys yeah. have never, if you guys have never read The Prophet by Khalil Gibran, <laughs> please do read it. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. And I guess um, the idea is if anybody here has children or a mother, um, take some time to really show them some respect today. Yeah, and if you, even if your mother's not around, whether you're not with your mom or your mother's not on this earth anymore, um, maybe spend some time if the work is forgiving with memory or if the work is loving with memory. Um, going back to what we were talking about first, spending time with the senses of, of your mom and who you came from. You know, right, or or if want. or if you or if you've been really close to them because they've been your mommy and they've always taken care of you and they're your safe place, but you've never really gotten to know them as a woman, as a soul, oh, as, as a soul a with, as a friend, you know, with desires and pain and fear and complexity. You know, ask them to tell you a story today about who they are as a human being. Do you, um, I mean, we could talk for like 10 hours. I know. <laughs> I really have to say, I truly plan to only talk to you for 30 minutes. I know. I mean, this is, this is what happens Insta like Instagram is going to kick us off in Maybe. five minutes. Okay. Well, <laughs> the last thing that I want to say is there's this game that in the last month or two, I, I um, was introduced to. It's called We're Not Really Strangers. Have you heard of this? No. Okay, well, it's a card game with three different levels. And essentially, it's, it's a game about connection. And the, the, mm -hmm. the level one is more basic, and then it gets more and more intense and, and mm -hmm. deeper. Um, but this is a game that I got for my family, for my sister and my parents, so that we could, you know, connect even remotely um, and share this game together. I love that. Will you yeah, text that to me? It's really, yeah, I'll send, did you say send it to you? Just text me what that yeah. game is called. Yeah, it's called We're Not Really Strangers, but I'll text you the information. But it's just really cool, like you said, getting to know people that have may maybe have been in your life for your entire life, but getting to know them in a different way, getting to know them as a stranger would. Because sometimes, yeah. you know, you're, you're in a situation, even with your best friend, where you meet someone together and that other person is asking your best friend these questions that maybe you wouldn't think to ask because you've known each other for so long and you're learning right. so much. So, so it's cool to also get to know the people that you already know um, yeah. in a different way in this time. Absolutely, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, I love you. I and love I'm you. so grateful we've become friends through doing these talks together. <laughs> and I know that people have been really enjoying this. So I hope uh, before I end doing these talks, you know, when we end, I hope you'll come back on a couple okay. more times with me. Anytime. You say okay. it. Honey. All oh. right. Well, <laughs> be safe in New York. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Happy all Mother's right. Day Thank to you, you and to everyone on here and all of your mothers. Yeah. yeah. Happy Mother's Day, guys. Be safe. Yeah. Stay safe, and I'll see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And, Seppi, thank you so much, babe. Thank Bye. you so much. Love you. Bye. Love you, too. Bye.